Now, the subject of today's video is another King James error. Uh, the subject specifically is Exodus uh, 3.22, Exodus 11.2, Exodus 12.35, and Exodus 12.36 concerning the word Vesha Allah, um, which is used in Exodus 3.22. It, uh, it uh, can either mean borrowed, lent, asked, requested, and uh, similar words. But is it appropriate to translate borrow or lent in the context of Exodus 3.22? Let's read it. But every woman shall borrow Allah, of her neighbor and of her and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and you shall put them on your sons and upon your daughters and you shall spoil the Egyptians and then you could check out the other contexts um, that I have on the screen here from the King James Version uh, <clears throat> now this is talking about the Israelites they're, they're get, taking a uh, gold and silver and raiment which is clothing they're taking it out of Egypt to follow uh, Moses so is it appropriate to say they're borrowing it if they're never going to come back to Egypt um, anyway you can see what I wrote about uh, uh, the Lord bless Allah down here on my site you have the Strong's number and uh, so on uh, but anyway um, here's the Hebrew word Allah, it's used in the very first Hebrew word, and every woman. Anyway, uh, here's the King James, well, like the King James only is, uh, dictionary that I like to use based on Noel Webster's 1828. For whatever reason, even though it's 200 years afterwards, they like to use it. Anyway, uh, here's what it says, borrow, to take from another by request and consent with the view to use the thing to uh, taken for a time and return it. Or, if the thing that is taken is to be consumed or transferred in use, then to return an equivalent in its kind as to borrow a book, a sum of money, a loaf of bread. It is opposed to lend. And you can check out the rest of uh, the definitions of whatever. Um, but anyway, so it means the same thing as it does now. Even to drill this point home, here's what the etymological uh, origin of the word is uh, Old English. This is for borrow. Bordian to lend, be surety for, from the Proto uh, Germanic. Uh, Borg, pledge, from the Proto Indo European. Bechird, to hide, to protect. See, bury. A bury. Sense, shifted in Old English to borrow. Apparently on the notion of collateral deposited as security for something borrowed. And then it refers to Old English Borge Pledge, uh, Security, Bail, Debt, Old Norse, Borgia. And it goes through all the other languages. So anyway, even in Old English this was the case. And uh, the King James was, wasn't was, was younger than Old English. I think it's called Modern Early English or Little or Late Middle English. Something along those lines. But so it's so definitely it had the same meaning even in that era. Uh, but anyway, here's here's uh, the word. Uh, you can see that most Bible translations, the NIV, the New Living, and so on, all use the word ask, ask or request, ESV, uh, the NASB, um, the Holman, the, the ISV. Uh, so you see the King James at the top still says, <laughs> even the Cambridge edition. God's Words Translation, uh, the, of course the American KJV Derivative aren't going to have it, the ASV, the Dway Reams, the Darby, the RSV, the ERV uh, has it. Webster's, now that's one of the exceptions, he seems to think is borrow for some unknown reason. Uh, the WEB, the Young's Literal, and then let's go into the footnotes, uh, Barnes shall borrow shall ask. The Egyptians had made the people serve with rigor, and the Israelites, when they came about to leave the country forever, were to ask or claim the jewels as a just, though very inadequate, rumor, remuneration for services which had made their lives better. Anyway, it goes on, so he thinks it should be ask or request. 
uh, Clark says every woman shall borrow. This is certainly not a very correct uh, tr translation. Uh, the original word sha'al signifies simply to ask, request, require, and so on, but does not signify borrow in the sense of that word. And then it goes on on how J virtually every other translation that's ever existed uh, says ask or request. And then he claims that it's uh, that uh, um, the King James gets this from, and he's referring to the King James as the common version, uh, gets this from uh, copying the Bible published by Beck in 1549. And that gave us the exceptional term borrow. And then uh, then he references the Geneva Bible and Barker's Bible and some others. Then it says ask, which is weird. I'm not. I think it's saying that uh, Geneva says this, which it does, and it actually uses borrow. Uh, well, actually, that's one of the next footnotes right here that we're going to look at. And these are like Protestant commentaries. Here's Gill. Gill mentions ask, but he doesn't really, I don't know, he doesn't really seem to be interested in the issue particularly of whether it was properly asked or borrowed. Uh, but anyway, uh, Geneva Bible clearly says borrow, they shall borrow of her neighbor. And that's in the Calvinist commentary, so like Gill, it doesn't really seem interested in defending ask as opposed to borrow, or explain why it's borrow. And here, Wesley, of course he's not Calvinist, and says it clearly does not mean borrow. Um, and then here, Schofield doesn't address it. I looked at Matthew Henry, he doesn't seem to address it in any of the verses. I've gone through uh, commentary that, yeah, he's, he just completely skips over it. Anyway, here's a, here's the, uh, here's a photocopier, uh, the Xerox of the original King James 1611, and notice the footnote. There's really no footnote other than to say, well, see chapter 11, uh, and this one about the Egyptians, you can just say Egypt, and then I actually follow the footnote chapter 11 and it <laughs> references uh, just go back to the previous one anyway um, there's really I really don't see how anybody could defend this I've seen people try to defend it by saying well uh, well the, hundreds of years later I think it was King Solomon uh, when he, the article says well uh, they gave m s a bunch of silver back to Egypt I think it was in return for something but the fact is the generation that did this they never returned it even if it was uh, uh, due to them for their hundreds of years of slavery in Egypt, um, you don't ask, you don't borrow something from someone. If you think it's, if they owe you it, you say, well, can I have this? You don't say, I'll borrow it. That implies you'll bring it back. That actually means you'll bring it back or uh, reimburse you for it. And on top of that, even if they did return the silver and the gold, it still says raiment, which is clothing. They didn't return the clothing, because uh, that was several hundred years later, or hundred years later, or whatever you want to say. Generations later, the clothing's gone. Uh, clothes don't last that long, and you certainly don't want an old piece of clothing uh, back. So anyway, uh, the King James Version, and a few other versions around that time, completely butchered this. There's no reason for it to say, uh, borrowed. They lent them, they borrowed of the Egyptians. It's just nonsense uh, found in the King James Version. It should not be defended, but King James only will uh, uh, make extremely ridiculous uh, stretches to defend uh, their beloved translation. Ironically, many of them are Baptists. And the King James translators persecuted the Baptists, but don't tell the Baptists that. Anyway, this is Berhane Selassie, the Orthodox Catholic. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.